MrMacBible.com. Genesis Coloring Bible, Book 5, Every Verse, Chapters 22 to 25. Sacrifice Isaac? What? Genesis 22, verses 1 to 21. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, Here I am. He said, Now take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you of. A burnt offering? Oh, this is bad. Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. Oh no! He split the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and come back to you. I'm confused. Hold on. This gets good. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. He took in his hand the fire and the knife and they both went together he's got a knife Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said my father he said here I am my son he said here is the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering Abraham said God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering my son God will provide himself. So they both went together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order. Huh. Abraham bound Isaac, his son. Oh no. And Abraham laid Isaac on the altar, on the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. Oh my gosh! The Lord's angel called to him out of the sky and said, Abraham, Abraham. He, Abraham, said, Here I am. He said, don't lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Wow. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and saw that behind him was a ram caught in the thickets by his horns. A ram. The Lord will provide. Genesis 22, verses 13 to 24. Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Wow, that's a barbecue I wouldn't want to come to. Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the Lord's mountain, it will be provided. Wow. Oh, I'm exhausted. The Lord's angel called to Abraham a second time out of the sky and said, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, that I will bless you greatly. And I will multiply your offspring greatly like the stars of the heavens and like the sand which is on the seashore. Oh, it's the promise of the seed again. That's right. Your offspring 
will possess the gate of his enemies, all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my voice. Oh, the seed leads to Jesus. That's right. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. Abraham lived at Beersheba. After these things, Abraham was told, Behold, Milcah, she also has borne children to your brother Nahor. Milcah, where have I heard that name before? That will come later with Isaac's wife. For Nahor his brother, Uz his firstborn, Buzz his brother. Buzz? You're kidding. <laughs> yeah, to infinity. <laughs> Camuel, the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, <laughs> Pildash, Jiblath, and Bethuel. And Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. These eight, Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Reuma, also bore Teba, Gehem, Tahash, and Mecha. That's a lot of kids. Sarah is gone. Where does she go? Genesis 23, verses 1, all the way to chapter 24, verse 9. Sarah lived 127 years. This was the length of Sarah's life. 120 years. That's a long time. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, also called Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Oh, that's Isaac. Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Abraham rose up from before his dead and spoke to the children of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a foreigner living with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. The children of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord, you are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the best of our tombs. None of us will withhold from you his tomb. Bury your dead. Abraham rose up and bowed himself to the people of the land, to the children of Heth. He talked with them, saying, If you agree that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may sell me the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is in the end of his field. The cave of Machpelah? For the full price, let him sell it to me amongst you as a possession for a burial place. So he wants to buy a cave to make a cemetery out of it for his family? Yeah. Okay. Now Ephron was sitting in the middle of the children of Heth. Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the children of Heth, even of all who went in at the gate of his city, saying, No, my lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that's in it. Oh, he gets it for free. In the presence of the children of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. He spoke to Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if you will, please hear me. I will give the price of the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. He wants to own that cave. That's right. Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me. What is a piece of land worth? Four hundred shekels of silver between me and you? Therefore, bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron. Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver which he had named in the hearing of the children of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the current merchant's standard. So for the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field, the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all of its borders, were deeded to Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth, 
before all who went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field and the cave that is in it were deeded to Abraham by the children of Heth as a possession for a burial place. Abraham was old and well advanced in age. The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh. Under his thigh? Yeah, you'll see. I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you shall not take a wife from my son of the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom I live. Oh, but you shall go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife from my son Isaac. The servant said to him, what if the woman isn't willing to follow me to this land? That's a good question. Must I bring your son again to the land you came from? Abraham said to him, Beware that you don't bring my son there again. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, who spoke to me, who swore to me, saying, I will give this land to your offspring. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. If the woman isn't willing to follow you, then you shall be clear from this oath to me, only you shall not bring my son there again. The servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. And that's a funny way to make a promise. Yeah, I'm glad we don't do that anymore. A wife for Isaac. Oh, good. Genesis 24, verses 10 to 27. The servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, having a variety of good things of his master's with him. Oh, it's a caravan. He arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time that women go out to draw water. He said, The Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water. The daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let it happen that the young lady to whom I will say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. Then she says, Drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Wow, what a prayer. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother with her pitcher on her shoulder. The young lady was very beautiful to look at, a virgin. No man had known her. She went down to the spring, filled her pitcher, and came up. The servant ran to meet her and, and said, Please give me a drink, a little water from your pitcher. She said, Drink, my lord. She hurried and let down her pitcher on her hand and gave him a drink. Oh, she's nice. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will also draw for your camels until they have finished drinking. Ooh. She hurried and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again to the well to draw and drew for all his camels. The man looked steadfastly at her, remaining silent to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. As the camels had done drinking, the man took a gold ring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter are you? 
please tell me. Is there room in your father's house for us to stay? She said to him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She said moreover to him, We have both straw and feed enough, and room to lodge in. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loving kindness and his truth towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the way to the house of my master's relatives. Oh, he's so excited. Yeah, it's quite a miracle. Will she go? Genesis 24, 28 through 52. The young lady ran and told her mother's house about these words. Rebecca had a brother and his name was Laban. Oh, I've heard of Laban. Laban ran out to the man, to the spring, when he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, this is what the man said to me, he came to the man. Behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, come in, you blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. The man came into the house and he unloaded the camels. He gave straw and feed for the camels and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my message. Laban said, speak on. He said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. He has become great. The Lord has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male servants and female servants, and camels and donkeys. Yeah, Abraham's loaded. Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. He has given all that he has to him. My master made me swear saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. He said to me, The Lord, before whom I walk, will send his angel with you and prosper your way. Oh, the cute little angel. You shall take a wife for my son from my relatives and of my father's house. Then you will be clear from my oath when you come to my relatives. If they don't give her to you, you shall be clear from my oath. I came today to the spring and said, The Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you do prosper my way which I go, behold, I am standing by this spring of water. Let it happen that the maiden who comes out to draw, to whom I will say, please give me a little water from your pitcher to drink, then she tells me, drink, and I will also draw for your camels. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebecca came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please give me a drink. She hurried and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also give your camels a drink. So I drank, and she also gave the camels a drink. I asked her and, and said, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her hands, and I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter for his son. Now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. If not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, The thing proceeds from the Lord. We can't speak to you, bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go and let her be your master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, 
he bowed himself down to the earth to the Lord. Rebecca and Isaac, Genesis 24, verses 53 to 67. The servant brought out jewels of silver and jewels of gold and clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious things to her brother and her mother. They ate and drank, he and the men who were with him, and stayed all night. They rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away to my master. Her brother and the mother said, Let the young lady stay with us a few days, at least ten. After that she will go. He said to them, Don't hinder me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. They said, We will call the young lady and ask her. They called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. They sent away Rebekah, their sister, with her nurse, Abraham's servant, and his men. Goodbye, Rebekah. They blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you be the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your offspring possess the gate of those who hate them. Rebekah arose with her ladies. They rode on the camels and followed the man. The servant took Rebekah and went his way. Isaac came from the way of Pierre Lahai Roy, for he lived in the land of the south. Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening. He lifted up his eyes and looked. Behold, there were camels coming. Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she got off the camel. She said to the servant, Who is the man who is walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. She took her veil and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things he had done. Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. He loved her, so Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Oh, that's so sweet! Goodbye, Abraham. Genesis 25, verses 1 to 20. Abraham took another wife, and her name was Keturah. Keturah! She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dedan. Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Asherim, Letushim, and Lemim. The sons of Midian were Ephath, Ephor, Hanok, Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but Abraham gave gifts to the sons of Abraham's concubines. His concubines? What were concubines? Well, they were like women servants who also had babies. Concubines. While he still lived, he sent them away from Isaac, his son, eastward to the east country. These are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, 175 years. Well, that's pretty old. Abraham gave up his spirit and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. His people? Isaac and Ishmael, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zehor, the Hittite, which is near Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased from the children of Heth. Oh, next to Sarah. Abraham was buried there with Sarah, his wife. Oh, that's so sweet. After the death of Abraham, God blessed Isaac, his son. Isaac lived by Beer Lahoy Roy, Oh, there's Rebekah. Now this is the history of the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore to Abraham. Ishmael and Hagar. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael. By their names, according to the order of their birth. Oh, here we go. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, then Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Derma, Massa, Hadad, Tema, Jeter, Nafish, and Ketama. Oh, nice job. Thank you. 
These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their villages and by their encampments. Twelve princes, according to their nations. Oh, the twelve sons of Ishmael. Well, that's interesting. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. Oh, Ishmael. He gave up his spirit and died and was gathered to his people. His people. They lived from Havilah to Shur, that is, before Egypt, as you go towards Syria. He lived opposite all his relatives. This is the history of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Syrian, to be his wife. Harry and the heel catcher? Genesis 25, 21 through 34. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. The Lord was entreated by him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. The children struggled together within her. She said, If it is like this, why do I live? She went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will be separated from your body. The one people will be stronger than the other people. The elder will serve the younger. Two different people from the twins that are in her... Yeah, 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 you got it. Okay. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. They named him Esau, or Esau. I've heard it both ways. Which stands for Harry? Yeah. After that, his brother came out, and his hand had hold on Esau's heel. He was named Jacob. Which means heel catcher. Yeah. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Jacob and Esau. The boys grew. Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a quiet man, living in tents. Now Isaac loved Esau because he ate his venison. Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob boiled stew. Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with some of that red stew, for I am famished. Therefore his name was called Edom. And Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. His birthright? Esau said, Behold, I'm about to die. What good is the birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. He swore to him. He sold his birthright to Jacob. For some stew. Yeah. Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. He ate and drank, rose up, and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. Amazing. Keep reading to Genesis 26, and then continue reading all of the books on MrMacBible.com. Oh, I will. <laughs>